uh, Vice President Pence um, had, you know, wrote a tweet. And Eric, you can go a little bit more into detail about it. And um, yeah, you can tell us kind of how that has affected the sports world. Yeah, I mean, um, before I get into it too, I want to I want to applaud both of you guys for what you said because um, I'm be I'm be 100. Before we did the show today, I, I really wasn't feeling it. Yeah. You know, I'm be honest. And everything you said, Em, is is so on point, and, and everything you said was so on point, man. Um, it's I haven't posted anything recently either because, as you guys know, I love to put up blogs and posts, and I haven't felt it. I haven't just felt it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was it was even before. Um, you know, George Floyd's death, Breonna Taylor getting murdered in her own home. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's to me is the point that's become so exhausting because it, 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 it becomes like you can only say but so much. Like, at what point does it like switch over and it click? Like, this is the part of my language is so fucked up, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but I want to, you know, get to that, that topic as well. But I, I thank you guys because I honestly, I to start off the show, I, I know I, I was lacking a little bit of the energy because as you same. mentioned him i felt that same way like man there's so much to go into this topic i i don't want to dilute what's going on in the world by just being this opinionated sports guy today um but as far as vice president pence um he sent out some tweets and to paraphrase them you know he said the the country stands by the americans and understanding that though they don't support the government doesn't support the rioting they understand people's right to peacefully protest um, which immediately immediately drew criticism from everyone on Twitter. He was uh, ripped to shreds by Steve Kerr and Eric Reed, uh, who both were great at highlighting the fact that not only was Vice President Pence, but also our so-called President Donald Trump, um, critical of peaceful protesting in the past. Right. And now that the people have had enough and the people no longer want to silently protest, Mm -hmm. Now you want to simmer things down and say, no, no, but we, we're okay with you silent protesting now. We don't want you rioting. We don't want you attacking the police like we've seen. And as Tripp mentioned, in New York, in Texas, in Minnesota, because we've seen the people starting to fight back. Yeah. And Tripp, you did a great job of highlighting that. It reaches a boiling point at some point. There's only but so many times you can punch somebody in the face before they're going to want to punch you back. Right. And the people are fighting back. And for Vice President Pence to say, oh, we, we're we okay with peaceful protesting, it's ironic because you weren't okay with it when Kaepernick was doing it, when Eric Reed was doing it, when other NFL players and people were siding with the players. Mm -hmm. This is why they were kneeling right. because of this type of nonsense that continues to happen every year and we keep having to have these discussions. We, we got, uh, in, in the past two and, two and a half, three months, Ahmaud Aubrey, uh, you said Brianna, Brianna uh, Taylor. Taylor. Yep. And then and then now now George Floyd. So it's it's like, you know, at, at what point, like you're asking for people to come out of themselves. You know, we it, it, we try to be we try to be calm and like we're gonna do this the right way. Uh we're gonna we're gonna protest, you know what I'm saying? We'll get out there in March, we'll have a sit-in. But if we're exhausted. We've exhausted all of our peaceful means of protest. At some point, somebody gonna stand up and somebody gonna, you know, they gonna they gonna do some things because it seems like when we're peaceful about things, you you, you just turn around and, and act like we ain't doing nothing. You ain't trying to make no changes. You're not, you're not opening your eyes unless we do something. And I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and I was just saying, you know, I was saying that sometimes, you know, as much as we don't want it to go there. Sometimes that, you know, the, the, you got to like, you got to clap back. Sometimes the violence is called for. That's what the, we had the civil war in this country because people got tired of how things were and we're still not too far removed from, from where we were in slavery. Right. It, we, we just, we, it's, it's, the, the years changed, but we are still dealing with the same thing. We're, there's no reason why in 2020, yeah. we should be forced to watch a man put his knee on somebody's neck and hold it down until this man has no life left in his lungs. There's no reason for that. And, and you know, the Kaepernick, <laughs> it's so crazy because this argument, we spoke about Kaepernick so many times, right? You talked about the kneeling. And during the time I, I posted today, I was like, um, so ask yourself, Kaepernick kneeling wasn't so bad after all, right? Like his peaceful protest wasn't that serious because his way of, of 
protesting in the most peaceful way of literally taking a knee, which is a respectful way to do it, brought awareness. And at the time, people thought he was extremely radical. People thought that it was insane that why is he trying to be Martin Luther King? And it's like, I think a lot of people are finding that greater appreciation for him now because they realize, even if you think it wasn't a problem, that this is really a problem. Like the systematic racism in our country is really a problem. And I think that, you know, people try hard not to make a correlation between the past and now, but the way our country was set up before has affected us on the day to day today. What's good? It's your boy Daylight. You're now tuned in with Real Fans, Real Talk.com. Bye, y'all.